Today I'm going to discuss two topics that I get questions about and that I also see people asking about on the World Wide Web with regards to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. The first subject is going to be numbers. What is a number when it comes down to it? Now, I've seen people say that numbers don't need to be syntax. That they don't need to have a colon in front of them. Why is this? Again, what is a number? Well, to me, when I'm looking at it, I know what I think it is. But if someone came from another domain far away from here and they saw a number, would they know that it's a number? I mean, I can't just assume that someone else knows what a number is, can I? Because in quantum grammar, there is no assumption and presumption. Now, we've heard many people say, including colon David Eichen, Wynn, colon Miller, and colon Russell hyphen J, colon Gould, one, that facts must be pre-positioned with a position loadial phrase. And we've also heard them say that numbers are facts, i.e., ergo, facts must be positioned with correctness, with the position loadial phrase. And numbers are facts. Therefore, Numbers must be positioned with position loyal phrase, and they exist. So, they would need to be syntaxed. When I syntax a document, I syntax all the hieroglyphics on the document. If I see something that looks like a drawing or a logo, I think of that as like a, a, an art, a piece of art, and it's not syntaxed. However, when I see a hieroglyph, hieroglyphic, a symbol, things like this, I think of it in terms of it's just representative of something. So letters and numbers fall into the same category. And then you can look at punctuations, they fall into another category, but they are still hieroglyphs, still symbols. And we assign specific functions to them. But we can't assume that everyone knows what those functions are, because we don't presume and assume. That's why we have our dictionaries. If we're going to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, then we will have our own personal dictionary to give closure to our own personal contracts, which would give closure to the function of those symbols and hieroglyphics, those punctuations, those letters, those numbers. And what their finite means are on our document. And by finite mean, I mean there is a limited value assigned to each thing, rather than a definition, which means no finite contract. That's why you have multiple meanings for words in fiction dictionaries. In quantum grammar, it's one word, one meaning, one symbol, one function, one congruency. So I'm going to give you an example. We have non-tangible contract pronoun he, and then we have non-tangible contract adverb is, and then we have tangible contract number, and then we have tangible contract one. He is a pronoun, and we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. In this case, it's an adverb. And this adverb is modifying this tangible contract number into an adjective, which is coloring one into a pronoun. This is not going to work if you just ignore that and say it doesn't exist. You're assuming something then. Why didn't he give closure to this? You must give closure to everything if you're using correct sentence structure. Everything on the document must have closure. If it doesn't, you're assuming that your reader knows that that is a number. That's assumption. Same thing here. Well, actually, it's not the same thing because 
It's a 412. And the reason why this is a 412 is because there is no space between this symbol and this number. So therefore, it's two characters in a row. I'm taking this as one entity in and of itself. And it is a dangling participle verb. Why is it a dangling participle verb? What is a verb? Verb is thinking. But there's nothing left to think about. So it's dangling there. Now in correct sentence structure, For the one, this has been positioned as a fact. For the one. Another way of writing that would be, if I were to write that like this, I don't know what that is. It could be an I for all I know. What is it? It's a pronoun now. Here, we have a positional lodial fact. Same thing here. The tilde designates position, by the way, location. Uh, designates that one is a location in this sense. Here, there's no closure as to what this is. It's just floating in a sea of space. And the same thing would go for any number. For a seven, it could be a seven. It must be, facts must be positioned by positional lodial phrases. End of story, period. If someone out there can give me closure and the world closure as to what is the exception for numbers if they feel that numbers should not be syntax and should not be positioned as facts, then what are they? What is your closure on that? And share it with the world so that we can all learn together. Because up until this point, I have heard no other reason as to why numbers wouldn't be syntax or wouldn't be positioned with correctness except for so-and-so said so. And that's not closure. The next subject I'm going to talk about is the use of the colon in front of a word in an, or in a group of words that does not have a verb in it. Or maybe it does have a verb in it, but we're going to start with a group of words that does not have a verb in it, such as a name. Okay. So in this one, we have a colon space, Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass. And in this one, we have colon, Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass, period. In this case, I'm going to write below it what this is saying, because colons in correct sentence structure represent position lodial phrases. And as we know, all facts must be positioned with position lodial phrases. All facts and numbers are facts, so... As stated earlier, numbers would also be positioned. So this would read like this. Of the Jason hyphen Matthew with the glass. That is what that reads. Going by the colon mechanics, if you use the correct sequencing of positional lodials facts, and you go by the sequencing of the functions of the positionals, 4 equals cause, of equals concern, with equals possessive, by equals authority. Every phrase, every correct sentence structure starts with a cause. For the. Period. Everyone starts with for the. But this is not starting with for the, is it? No, because the colon has been used incorrectly. This is the correct use of the colon in this sense. So the reason why this is the correct use of the colon is because the cause is for the Jason hyphen Matthew. And what's the Jason hyphen Matthew concerned with? 
of the glass. We have to have a cause to start anything. There must be a cause, a source, something to get the ball rolling. You wouldn't be starting with a concern. Because first you have to have a cause before you can be concerned with something. Or to use more archaic language, concern could also be synonymous with consequence or effect. You wouldn't start a claim with a consequence. First you have to have a cause before you have a consequence. Therefore, for the and not of the. This is not correct to start a word, phrase, or a correct sentence structure with. So you see in this sentence, <clears throat> colon space claim of the facts is with the knowledge by a claimant. This is not for the. This is of the. Going by correct sequencing of positionals. So now we have an of the and another of the with the by a. So when you read it backwards, what does it become? For a claimant of the knowledge is with the facts. And now we have what? With the facts with the claim. It doesn't make sense. It does not maintain the same mathematical integrity going forwards as it does backwards. This is not an authority going backwards. This is not a cause going forwards. So this is incorrect. You would have to put the colon here in order for it to be correct, just like I showed you in the name. Now another thing I see people doing is this. They'll put a colon, and then they will put for the claim. So basically what you're saying is for the, for the claim. So you're putting two position modial phrases in front of this fact, which is not correct, and it throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Nonsense. I hope this was helpful, and I hope this helps answer some of the questions uh, that viewers have. Now again, I reiterate, the comment section of my YouTube channel is not the place to get closure on correct sentence structure. If you decide to comment on this video and start asking grammar questions, I'm going to probably direct you to my email address, and then you would email me, state your full correct name, ask your question, and then I would schedule a brief 10 to 15 minute consultation, video consultation, where we can look at each other face to face and you can ask your question or give your grammar comment and we can have a discussion um, man to man or man to woman and, and talk about it on a geometric level playing field. If I offer you that option, that venue for closure, and yet you continue to comment, then I know you're not serious about it. Because to be serious about correct sentence structure, one must be willing and able and capable of stepping onto the geometric level playing field of contract at any point in time. So today we've covered the numbers and we've covered uh, colon usage. I do have a colon video giving closure on how uh, colon is used in correct sentence structure and I'll leave a, a link to that up here. I also have another video about numbers which I left at the beginning of the video. So the closure is there, I'm just actually repeating myself because some people just don't go back and study the videos, which is cool. That's the beauty of contract, it's a choice. There's no coercion. Everyone is their own authority if they choose to be. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching.